Hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> Tig, you monster. Tig and I are doing well. Um, 42, 42 years old, first dog, first puppy ever. And uh, I got mad respect for anyone who ever, else has ever raised a puppy. Now I know the difference between raising a kitten and a puppy, day and night difference. So, uh, but, but things are going well. After that first night, uh, no more accidents inside the RV. Although he wakes me up two to three times a night to go pee in the middle of the night. That's just part of puppyhood, I guess. Um, since we have one acre here, um, you know, he pretty much stays by my side and I can keep a close eye on him. I never go too far away from him. I don't let him get too far away. So uh, things are going really, really good. He's such a good boy. Yeah, he is. A lot going on today. I've got old Reba the Rebel all cleaned up, polished up, looking as good as ever. Got a prospective buyer coming for Reba the Rebel. Someone who knows about the uh, throttle looseness here and the clutch engagement over there and, and ripping the seat. Other than that, it's a really good bike with only 779 miles. However, I'm a Harley guy, so Reba the Rebel is gonna find a new home today, hopefully. Let's go this way, Tig. There you go, little buddy. I think he's starting to know his name a little bit better. Tig, Tig. I'm utilizing the, uh, actually, this is this the first time I've used this thing? Yeah, it's the first time I've used this little portable washing machine plugged into a power station over here. It's a great little tool for cleaning rugs and towels and other stuff that puppies might might pee on or just the grime inside the, the carriers that, that they get. So we're, we're, we're doing a couple loads of laundry here. Actually, that was a good time. Let's see how much water we have used in our uh, tank over here. I haven't opened that lid since it got filled up. I'm trying not to get a whole lot of dust in there. <laughs> it's pretty much still full. I don't know if you can see the line. We've used about 60 gallons of water in three weeks, so uh, we're still looking pretty good here. That's awesome. It's just that I didn't want to get dirt and dust in there. Okay, I've learned that Tig is more of a uh, shade dog. He definitely likes the uh, shade. You know, throughout the day, I've been keeping a close eye on the temperature of the rocks. They don't get too hot or anything. I just don't think he likes the roughness, which is why we got something new for the puppy. Let's show him right now. Yeah, I got these, uh, I got three more rolls right here that I haven't opened up yet, but this little fake AstroTurf stuff, these are six foot by eight foot at Home Depot for 23 bucks. Good price, they're pretty much throwaway at that price. I got this one uh, staked down, I got some of these, they're actually AstroTurf stakes that go in there. You can't even really see them when you step back like this, but just something different over here. Wait a minute, you wanna go inside? You actually want to go inside, but you can't climb these steps. Dad's got to help you. Here, I'm going to open this. Actually, we'll see how badly he wants to go inside. Maybe he'll figure it out. Oh, oh, oh. One more. You're almost there, buddy. One more. Oh. Man, I need a little bit of help. Tomorrow I'll get it. Oh, good boy, Dick. What a good boy. You did it. That's the first time you've climbed those steps. What a good boy. I hear you too, Opie. Opie is for sure a good boy. Hi, baby boy. Good morning. I'm gonna go for a ride real quick, actually. You know, I, I try to wear Tig out as much as possible outside. He likes to follow me around the yard here when I'm doing projects, which is great for me because that's less, less indoor stuff that we have to wear him out with. But um, since I got uh, Reba the Rebel all uh, cleaned up and looking good, maybe one more ride. Uh, did you guys know? I don't even know if I mentioned when I bought this property. We're supposedly a 10 minute walk to our private lake out here. 10 minute walk should be like a two or three minute ride to the, the lake that's on the other side of the road over there. So uh, let me get Tig put back in his crate here. Close a few things up. We'll take uh, Reba out and uh, go for a little ride. By the way, it is another extremely, extremely windy day out here in Arizona this time of year. They don't even put the sun icon in the weather. The next four days, they all have the wind icon. Let's get Reba started. 
on this very blustery day. Let's go over here. Let's turn the fuel on with the new petcock and new carburetor there. Turn it on like that, run, and fire it right up. Yep, she's quiet, but. I'm gonna miss this bike, but there's no reason to keep it. Not when I got big sexy black Betty here who needs a bath bad, but I've been riding the heck out of her. Yeah, look at all the bug splatter. Woo-wee, whoa, black Betty, bam, a lamb. What I will miss most about this little motorcycle is it's just ability to be a little scooter, just a, just a little scoot scoot on, on back roads. Shorts and a t-shirt are acceptable attire for a little Honda Rebel. And this is the bike, well, bike like this that I learned to ride a motorcycle on when I was uh, 22 years old. So I've always had an affinity for little Honda Rebels and their reliability. I put a lot into this bike, and those of you who have followed me know, I never gave up on it until the day I gave up on it today. We'll see. They're on their way from Phoenix to come pick up this motorcycle. Yeah, there are a lot of private roads that you can't go down, but this one I found. Look at this. The lake is right in front of us. I found it. Heck yeah, Reba. That's a nice little send away for Reba the Rebel, I think. Uh, <laughs> we got a lake here, guys. Although it doesn't look very clean, it's still a lake. I could bring a chair down here. And you gotta think, I'm probably gonna spend some time down here at the lake. The wind, like, the wind is gonna be nice all summer. If this keeps up like this, mid, mid 80s with that constant wind, especially a day like today with the high, high winds. Yeah, I wouldn't swim in this, but I would put a kayak out there or maybe one of my inner tubes where you sit in and you can splash some water. But uh, it's pretty out here, guys. Yeah, kind of lakefront. Or is it a pond? It might, might be considered a pond, but I bet there's fish in there and I do have a fishing license, so. Anyways, anyway, from Roxy the Rebel to Reba the Rebel, it's been uh, interesting with this bike. It's been interesting. Uh, would I get another one later? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with Honda bikes for now. Um, you know, for, for cruising around, you know, when I wanna go to the store or go into town, uh, I always take my Harley. Uh, this bike, it kind of straddles that line between, oh, let's go take it to town in Sholo versus let's go take it down a dirt road to the lake. And it just, it doesn't hit any category correctly anymore. Top speed 65, there ain't no more. That, there's no, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a tuck, tuck it, 65 max. And cars want to go 90 mile an hour on the way to a Sholo. So, so for me personally, Harley, Harley is my motorcycle, Black, Black Betty. And, uh, but I may get another, kind of dual sport or or dirt bike for for out here because i don't think i'm gonna get a a quad you know a, a, a atv or anything like that I, I like little motorcycles remember that old uh yamaha tw 200 i had little dual sport motor be great for getting out here like this this bike there's just no place in my life for it anymore and i'm sad i feel bad i put all this work and effort into it and I'm just dumping it off for a fraction of what it's worth, but but it's gonna free up space and, and I don't have to worry about licensing and insuring it anymore. So more money that I can put back into the property. So let's get back. I don't like to leave Tig too long. Poor boy. Oh, he's a good boy in his crate. Look, this is just four days of amazing progress. Uh, on day one, I could not leave him in, in a crate or a carrier or anywhere. I couldn't even leave him in this open space while I go walk to one of my sheds. He just, he would cry and bark and have severe separation anxiety. But you know, over, you know, I've got all his toys in here. It's his comfort spot. And um, he's, he's grown to be okay with it when need be. There's just certain times where I, I can't take him with me on a motorcycle or, or other times where I, where I need to make sure that he's safe and he can't destroy something else in here or have an accident. And then I feel guilty about it because I gave him free range, you know?
Uh, this has actually been here for three days. Now on the first two days, um, I had to swap this out because he would walk to the door and look out here and then out of nowhere just squat and pee on it. So there's a really handy spot to have it because that's the only spots he was having accidents. But we are, we are three days accident free inside the RV here and that includes in bed. My bed's not made, but this, and I know every dog's different, but this has been an absolute lifesaver. When we go to bed, he goes in here, I'm, I'm cleaning his, his blankets and stuff, but he goes in there with, with some toys and some chew toys, and then I turn this around and it sits right there, and he gets to face my head with my hands able to go like, like this, and this works great until he starts whimpering a couple times overnight that he's ready, and then we wake up and go potty outside. I feel like one of those new new dads, like like proud after after three days of restless sleep, and then you can be like, oh, it's so quiet in here. I feel like I deserved this. I I earned this. But this is a this is a this is a struggle between him and I to 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 get this kind of harmony and balance. And also Tara. I mean Tara only only comes out when Tig is either outside the RV or if he's passed out. Sometimes she'll crawl over real sneakily. And they got access to their robot litter box over there, and I feed Tara either up there or down there. Opie, Opie's been out, but but yeah, just giving you some some updates there. Um, then in just three days now, uh, we start obedience uh, puppy preschool training uh, at the pet store here in Sholo, and that'll be great. It's actually going to be an intermediate class mixed with advanced class and puppies, and I don't know if we'll be the only puppy there or how that's all going to work, but. Um, but I'm I'm excited to learn some tools that I can bring back to camp to start to start working with Tig a little bit more one on one outside. You'll also notice that I have been spreading rock like a fool here on the property. I got it all the way back there to the tree so that all this has rock. I have finished the entire midsection here as well as that big hole that was right here in front of the shed. Driveway is clear and usable. There's just one more thing I'm working on and that is this last pile that's taking forever to move this one all that needs to move back there past my my trailer so that i can get two more rvs over there i could potentially get two rvs back there one rv right here and if need be an rv can go all the way back past the water tank back there and uh i might be having a friend rv showing up today i need to check my messages to find out i invited a couple people might have some friends come over but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break and I'll cut back in here in a little bit, guys. Can't forget to show the kitties. Um, Tara, well, Tara, Tara obviously does come down because she has to use the poop box, <laughs> but she's very picky about when she does uh, since Tig is occupied right now. I'm, I feed her up here and I put her food bowl with her water and everything up here and she's just gonna take a little bit more time whereas Opie, he's totally fine with the dog. He'll be down here with, with the puppy, but you know, I'm Tara's. Tara's got a different background, so um, I'm, I'm a little easier with her, and I'm gonna pamper her a little bit through this transition with the puppy. Opie's down here eating, and uh, as I mentioned, um, I've got some guests out here, guys. We've uh, we've got a party out here outside my RV. Let me go out and show you. The sun's getting ready to set, and uh, I still need to spread a bunch of rock in front of uh, Homer and his wife and Coco and. There's a bunch of stuff over there, so we can't access the rest of the property over there. We've also got a full tiny house, Steve, Dana, and the kids, and the puppy parked right here in this section here. And again, I wish it were more open and we had more room because we're all in one uh, spot here, but uh, we're making it work. This is the first uh, friends I've had camping uh, overnight here on the property. And check this out, my favorite tree right here. Homer and Ethan have been helping me out here and they trimmed up, got all this to burn later on. All this came off of the tree. So we have this nice open setting here. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Really opened up the space, gave us a lot more shady spots to sit out here. And it's still windy. We have some extreme wind to come in the next few days. That'll give me some time to go over here. I'll show you what I'm working on. This big rock pile right here that is literally blocking off so that nobody else can get back here and utilize the whole back of my property. So I'm gonna be spreading this rock. Uh, or I may hire somebody to spread the rock, we'll see. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna enjoy the company of friends here. Uh, Tig is passed out on uh, Aubrey's lap over there, so I'm gonna get myself a bite to eat. And uh, I'll cut back in here in a few days from the property. You guys be well. See you next time. Bye-bye.